In a previous video, I had mentioned that I was going to take all of the remaining filters and cover them all in a single video. Well, I've changed my mind. I tried it, and that video was just getting a little bit too bloated, so I'm breaking this all back down into individual videos for each filter. I hope that doesn't uh, bother you too much. Hopefully, it'll help you take in all of this information. I also wanted to throw something out there that I mentioned in the intro, but that was a little while ago, depending on the order in which you're watching these, and I just want to reiterate, all of these filters... Uh, they're pro-only features, and you can add them directly to an audio source if you'd like to only apply your filter directly to that source. If you do that, you can bypass them by using the Bypass Effects checkbox. But you can also apply your filters to the audio listener, and it will apply that filter to all incoming sounds if you so desire. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that one more time before we go on. So in this video we're going to take a look at the high pass filter. Now this is exactly the opposite of the low pass filter and we start to see where all of these remaining filters being the high pass, echo, distortion, reverb, and chorus where all of these are different from low pass because as soon as I add this you'll notice that it does not get added to our roll off graph. It's just kind of sitting there on its own. Now, we can still control this over distance if we wanted to, but we'd have to do it through script. We just don't have the means to handle it here, right inside of our audio source. Just keep that kind of thing in mind. Now, we only have two properties here. We have our cutoff frequency, which goes from 10 to 22,000 hertz. Not 220,000, but 22,000. So that's the, the low to high. And this does exactly the opposite of what the low-pass filter did. This will cut off all frequency ranges under what you specify. So if we set this to something really high, like, oh, I don't know, let's, tr let's say about uh, 10,000. Now, inside my scene, I still have Chopin playing off my boombox here, so if I hit play, we can barely hear anything, actually. And that's with the volume all the way up. So we're actually cutting off most of that. So let's pull that down to about 2,000. And you, it sounds like it's coming from really, really poor quality speakers. If you could even make that out. Now what I'm going to do is click over here in the inspector. And I'll try to get us to where we're, we're looking more closely at the boombox. I don't know why, it just makes me feel better. Okay, so now if I change these settings, like let's say we go to, let's say just 1,000. Some more of those rich tones start to come in. If I set it all the way down to 10, we almost can't tell it's there. Because all of those lower, rich, uh, bassy tones are coming through. Then as I increase to 100, we start to lose some. By a thousand, we lose a good chunk of them. And by 10,000, we can almost not hear anything anymore. It's very faint. It may not even be coming through on your speakers at all. So let me try something like 7,500. Yeah, also very, very faint. I can hear it on my headphones, but I'm not sure if you can hear it on your end. So if you were wanting to use this in a practical sense, a good way to apply it would be if you're trying to get the effect of uh, taking like a, a voice recording that you have and make it sound like it's coming from some really old, tinny, nasty speakers that have no bass to them whatsoever. That's a, a really good way that you could use this. Now our other property is high pass resonance quality filter, uh, or I'm sorry, quality frequency. And what this is going to do for us is control the internal resonance of this filter, which it, it has its own internal waveform that we can't really uh, play with. And I'm sorry, that's a uh, quality factor. I keep thinking it's, it's filter and frequency, and it's neither. It's a high-pass resonance quality factor, just known as the high-pass resonance Q. And if you increase this, you start to dampen that internal waveform. Uh, to, to kind of die it down so that its oscillations uh, die off a bit more slowly. That's not something that I'm really going to explore here, though. So that's a quick look at the high-pass filter. Again, it's very, very basic, really good for taking your sounds and trying to make them sound a lot tinnier than they did. You know, if you've got, like, um, a character's voice that you need to play back through a walkie-talkie, 
you know, walkie-talkies tend to have no, you know, really good subwooferish sound, and so you don't have to go, you don't have to worry about uh, editing that and turn it in an uh, external audio package if you don't want to. You can just take somebody talking just like I am right now and play it back with a high-pass filter, and that will solve your problem. So that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.